As an illustrator, I'm no stranger to working on large illustrations that end up on walls. But I've always wanted to paint a wall mural by hand, but I've also been kind of intimidated because I don't know the process of, of like doing it on a, in, on a physical wall. Everything I do is digital. But when I moved into my new studio over the summer, and that's where I'm standing right now, I knew this was a great chance to give this mural a try. In this two-part episode, I'll share the process of making it from start to finish. In this video, part one, I talked about how I planned the mural, including how I came up with the idea and how I got ready to put down some of those first scary rolls of paint. In part two, I'll show you how the painting process went and show you how it all turned out. But first, welcome to the channel. My name is Mr. Tom Froze, and I'm an illustrator and a top teacher on Skillshare, where I've helped unlock the world of commercial illustration to well over 100,000 students around the world. But enough about me, let's just jump right into the content. First, let's just talk about the space and the wall. I moved into this new studio over the summer, and like I said, I always wanted to paint a mural, and this space had exactly the right setup. There was no excuse this time. I had to do it. Now, of course, when doing any kind of art, the first thing you want to know is, what are, you, what are you gonna make? So this is how I came up with the idea for this mural. So I have a Patreon account and of course, people who support me there. And for my patrons, I do monthly drawing meetups called Draw With Me. This is over Google Meet and we hang out together kind of live and we draw together. In one of the meetups over the summer, we drew birds together. In this particular session, I had the group draw a few different kinds of birds, including a dove. Here's a few examples of what others drew in the session, and here's what I drew. Now, I also have a personal daily sketchbooking practice that's become a sort of morning ritual for me. Every morning, I spend about an hour drawing in my little colored paper sketchbook from Ugly Books, and I share it on my special drawing account on Instagram called Drawing is Important. So on the day of the drawing meetup, we did that first thing in the morning. So I had to bump my like sketchbooking ritual to later that day and I kind of ran out of time. So I just decided to do a quick version of the dove that I drew with the group in my sketchbook. When I shared the post on Instagram, it got so many likes. I mean, to date it has 3,700 likes and that's the most of any post on, on my drawing account so far. And honestly, I think that's probably more likes than I've ever received on anything I've ever made on Instagram ever. And that includes my pro account, which has almost 30,000 followers. So I'm not saying I only uh, you know, make stuff so that it gets the likes, but when something I make gets a lot of likes, uh, you know, it is very confidence boosting. It's very rewarding and affirming when you make something and that thing gets a lot more traction than you were expecting. You know, I think that's normal and I think it's okay if you have a healthy mindset about it. A couple of weeks later, I thought, you know, maybe this could be the mural uh, concept. I posted a snapshot of my ugly book sketch against one wall in my studio and it fit perfectly so I figured why not just go with that. I literally planned on painting just an enlarged version of my sketch, kind of exactly what I saw in my sketchbook. I would put that up on the wall. Now before we get on with the process, I just want to give a little bit of a backstory. This isn't the first time I've tried to do a mural on a wall in my studio. So I've been thinking about doing a physically painted wall mural in my studio for a very long time, even back when I was in my home studio. Back in 2020, when I was planning my style class, I was in sort of a rut and kind of impulsively decided to try painting a mural on my wall completely on a whim. You know, I felt really inspired, but when I actually got the paintbrush in my hand, I crashed into an old familiar wall. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I painted about half the wall, one crappy color, and then I abandoned it. The rut I was in, that creative despair, just seemed to get deeper. The reason I failed, and I knew better than this at the time, was that I had no plan. You know, without a plan, I had no idea what the mural would be about, what colors it would be, and I didn't even have the right supplies. Fast forward to two years later, and this time I did have a plan. 
I was ready to try again. Now, before we get on with what that plan actually was, I mentioned that I'd been planning my style class, which is, of course, one of my growing number of classes on Skillshare. And by the way, this is not an advertisement for Skillshare, but for the classes I make for the platform. These classes are my pride and joy because I know they've helped thousands and thousands of students break into the world of commercial illustration. My classes are for creatives who want to learn not only how to illustrate, but how to think more like an illustrator. As a teacher, I don't want to show you how I do what I do. You know, I build each class to help you discover more about what you do. Of one of my most popular classes, the style class, Work Out Your Illustration Style in a Daily Project, one student said, I'm delighted with this course and Tom tells us how to find our illustration style through a practical method. Great teacher, I'm impressed. These are her words, not mine. My classes are accessible and challenging to almost all levels of illustrator from beginner to expert. Visit tomfros.com slash teaching to learn more. So the first thing I needed was a way to get my dub up on the wall in like, in a proportional way. The best way I know how to do this is to use a laser projector. Using one I found cheap on Marketplace, I connected it to my iPad and projected my digital sketch up onto the wall. To do this using my iPad, I had an HDMI adapter already on hand and I just used an HDMI cable to connect it to the projector. Once I had the image projected up on the wall, I realized I had a problem. The sketch just looked too plain for the wall. It lacked personality. Just seeing it really big, you know, it just, something happens when you make something bigger, you, you just perceive it differently. So I spent an hour or two working more on the drawing by projecting Procreate right up on the wall. And this was really helpful because I could work out the art directly in the context in which we'll end. And this is almost never the case for me. In the end, I kept the overall composition and shape of the bird on a dark background, but I added some extra details like the scalloped wings and tail, a more expressive eye, and I made the feet more stubby like how I draw hands in my typical illustration style. Oh, and I also added some lettering. So why this word? Why peace? Because it's a word I love and I can stand to look at it every day. I also added a sun and some stars. Now, if you're wondering like my eight-year-old daughter did, why the sun and the stars would be out at the exact same time, it's to remind me that the sun still shines at night, even if we can't see it. Now, before I show you how I got the sketch up onto the wall from that projection, I wanna talk about some of the supplies that I needed, including things like paint and brushes. I got most of my paint and brushes at Canadian Tire. I used their house brand, Premier, and it's kind of like, you know, it's more affordable than some more name brand paints. For the dark background, I lucked out and found a bag of dark navy blue that reminds me of the color I use a lot in place of black in my illustrations. For the beak, eye, sun, and lettering, I had the clerk at the store mix up the closest possible colors from their swatches in the smallest possible size pin. I was happy to see that they now have tester size or trial size, which is smaller than the court. For brushes, I got one and two inch brushes and also a few tiny foam rollers just in case. I already had some painting stuff like rollers and cages, and I even had a quart of white semi-gloss paint that I could use for the white dove. I was surprised actually to see it was perfectly good, even though the paint was bought over eight years ago when we moved into our current house. Other than that, I needed some good painter tape and I was off to the races. All in, I spent about $130 on supplies I didn't have on hand, plus $75 for the projector for a total of just over 200 loonies. That's $200 in Canadian currency. Finally, I was ready to start tracing the sketch onto the wall. I made sure the sketch was nicely centered with a bit of breathing space all around and then got to work. Now, this is where I'm gonna end this part of the process until next time. What I will say is that I made one glaring mistake here and I'm wondering if you caught it. Can you guess what I did wrong or at least what I did in the wrong order? Let me know in the comments what you think that might be and stay tuned for part two 
I'll be sure to explain. All right, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I just want to remind you that this whole mural idea was inspired by a drawing I did with my Patreon supporters. If you enjoyed this content and want to support what I'm doing, you can become a patron for only $3 a month. This gives you access to monthly live Draw With Me meetups, plus my growing catalog of past sessions, all exclusively available to my patrons. Visit patreon.com slash tomfroze and sign up today. If that's not for you, no worries, just liking this video is a huge encouragement and a way to boost it in the algorithm. Thank you so much, my name is Mr. Tom Froze, I'll see you in the next one.